Hey, I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM22 Career Mode. This is episode number 18, and we are in the middle of a race that last time out started very, very well. The objective here, and it's the first major objective of the year, is to get a top five in the overall for this five stage race. There was a couple sprint stages, those are both behind us now. But in the first punchy stage, which involved a lot of climbing and a very, very divided field at the end and a lot of world tour riders good good climbers here not necessarily the best but very very good Pavel Sivakov was the winner of the stage but we with Abner Gonzalez was able to grab second place and have a pretty good grip on a potential top five now Gonzalez is not a very good time trialist at stage five is a time trial, the stage after this one. So we do have a major conflict ahead of us in terms of staying in position, staying in the podium or staying in the top five with Gonzalez. So today is still a very important stage. Looking at the profile very closely from the Cat 3 to the Cat 2, is 13 kilometers from the cat two to the finish line is 24 so using those measurements I can judge the final climb to be roughly slightly above three maybe three and a half kilometers in length maybe even pushing four but it does flatten out obviously at the very very top that is obviously short enough to be catered to punchers but that is also just about long enough that the punchers, if you pushed early, could decimate the punchers and set it up actually for the climbers at the finish to have not much left. Which tactic to go with? Well, for me, we had a really good draw. It's actually right along, right on par with our expected draw, just plus one net compared to what was there because every single rider here has this as an objective and is well fit for this race so we were expected today to have a uh, plus 17 we ended up with a plus 18 net so we're looking good on that part but obviously Bogley and Frigo not <laughs> they got the negative draws that balanced out with everybody else so Bogley and Frigo domestiques for the day hands down no doubt about it in fact they are already on the verge of being done we have this cat 2 coming up and we have 30k to go so we're going to take uh, Hoggins the other domestique because I still needed to get water one final time so we'll set him up for that uh, as Bogley and Frigo are a little bit too fatigued to be the ones handling that slight slight little false flat here for a moment before we set up this climb to come Hoggins needlessly dropping too deep though ends up temporarily splitting off the back but he's getting back into position as we approach the climb and I meant to do this a little while ago uh, gelling up for those two we're also going to need to up the effort on these guys for this climb and Hoggins has not come through yet he is still making his way up with the water bottles there is four riders of the break. We're down to eight riders off the front. I was getting nervous that the uh, breakaway would actually have what it took to win the stage as they were looking at a pretty healthy gap, but that's come down really fast here uh, as we went from that Cat 3 to this Cat 2 over these last you know, 13 or so kilometers. Uh, the pace, though, the pace is decimating the field, so we are looking at different circumstances than I think what we were looking at just 20k ago. Uh, Bogley, Frigo already dropped. Hoggins, not a ton left in the tank for him, but I think he will make it over this climb still here. For Mark, struggling at the back end of this field, even with a 79 mountain. But we kept that effort level a little bit lower. Just 39 in the peloton, chasing now seven off the front but they are only 30 seconds ahead and that gap is shrinking uh, by a second or two every half kilometer or so so they're, they're coming back fairly quick Huggins did make it through that he'll give us the lead out but now with 
five riders and a small group, I think what we're looking at is a scenario, a standard scenario. I, I've been thinking about attacking with two separate groups. One to support Gonzalez to make sure he maintains his position and one to look for the stage win with the numerous plus fives that we have of strong punchy guys. That being said, now we are with just five riders and Hoggins being fairly tired. I think we're, we're looking at your standard sprint train run in leading out Gonzalez, obviously, but thinking more along the lines of uh, Beno or Vermark for the actual stage win. And I'm trying to get two guys across the line at the front uh, and, and just pull Gonzalez along in that matter. Those guys at 20 seconds are definitely not going to last. Here's the last undulation. We're about to hit this hill, short and steep. And is it just me, or is Conrad trying to attack? No. Okay. He is not, apparently, attacking. Let's go 85, though. It's short and steep, yes, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be an attempted attack by Adria. Martinez, Suter, Sobrero, Steinhauser, and wow, they picked up almost 30 seconds in that very short stretch. 10.5k to go. This is time for us to move. 10.5k out. I didn't want to move yet, but we have no choice. Otherwise, those guys are going to get away, stay away. So, Gonzalez is the supported rider. Vermark, I think, is going to be the punchiest at an 83. Yeah, Beno's an 81, so... Uh, and Arietta, also an 81, actually also with an 80 mountain, but he is 80 on the stamina resistance where we're looking at a bit stronger for Beno. You can already see the difference between the two. Hoggins, where's your position at? Uh, how about we start with Arietta, and then we will swap them in a moment, but let's go ahead and gel up for Hoggins and not for Arietta, but let's start that chase once everybody's in position. Then Hoggins will uh, roll through in front of Arietta. Okay, there is a little bit of a chase going on, so that's good. We're not the only ones Conrad actually chasing. Is he trying to attack? No, he is chasing. Hamilton, Nader, and this is such a strong, strong field for our team. Hoggins is in place. Let's go ahead. Okay, 7K. This is a really good spot to take measurement. Uh, we are not the front of the gray. We are that thick black line, or that thin black line near the front end of it. And it feels like it's almost exactly halfway between here and the finish line. So I'd say we're at about 3.4, or 3.3 is going to be the base of the climb. So 3.4 or 3.3. Arietta, go ahead and gel up. And Huggins. These guys are not getting away, so go ahead and back off just a little bit on your chase. We've got them neutralized. We took care of that part. Okay, now inside 6K, so no, go ahead and gel. Hawkins continuing to push, 5.5K now. And this push is going to put a lot of pressure. We just dropped some riders. We're down to 29. So Hoggins, uh, letting go of those at the back. We're going to go ahead and move back onto Arietta. And we are at 5K. We're not quite ready to climb. I'm going to go 94 for a moment. Hoggins, go ahead and drop to the back. And we are going to gel up in about 100 or 200 meters on Vermark. Three riders left off the front. Another one trying to attack. That actually closed that gap. OK. We're at 3.4. We're going to turn this corner and go up. So like I said, 3.3 seemed to be about right. And go ahead and gel for Gonzalez. And we've got him set up very well. Vermark and Bono are both looking fantastic. And we are climbing. Looks like it was 3.2. Arietta is done onto Bono at 2.5. Are we still looking good? He's doing some damage. We're going to go maybe 90 three and Arietta go ahead and slip to the back here and <laughs> we are off the front we are off the front Lopez 
has opened a gap. Hoggins. Hoggins. Go ahead and just auto set up. Now it's a front six, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. These guys are losing some ground. Hindley, Lopez are with us. But wouldn't that be something if we could take a few seconds out of this? 2K to go. Pushing 94 now. Gonzalez does not need a red bar. And we've opened another gap. Arietta, sit on. Follow these guys. Make them chase. And there's a gap behind them. A healthy gap behind them. <laughs> it is a very healthy gap. Uh, Gonzalez does not have the red bar. We want to pull him along. So Bono, give me like a 93. We don't want this gap to open as it just did. So Bono out of red bar for Mark. For Mark, go win the stage. Bono, wait for Gonzalez. Okay, there you go. Bono back in place. Uh, I want Gonzalez to follow Bono. Try to pull him along. For Mark going for the stage, and it's looking really good at this point. Not perfect, though. There's Lopez. Hindley closing that gap. Hindley will not close that gap, though. Sprint it out. Please have a. Gonzalez be just close enough. Vermark takes the stage, but no. And Gonzalez, a one, two, three finish. <laughs> Hell yeah. Arietta. Arietta in good position as well. And we're already 30 seconds gone by. And what are we looking at next? Adria. Adria, who sits third overall. There's Martinez. Honore who's in the breakaway in today's Tour de France stage, stage 19 at the time that I'm recording this. There's Hamilton, who sits fourth overall, well down the order. We are already at a minute and 26. Gino Bader, who sits fifth. The yellow jersey, Pavel Sivakov crossing the line in 19th at a minute and 43 or so behind. We're waiting for the tail Holy so cow. They better give some time gaps here as everybody's coming in in ones and twos with, I mean, we were at three minutes by time Hoggins crossed the line in 27th place. And now for the big test of what sort of time gaps are applied because you could almost have every single rider from 1st to 27th. You could have probably 20 to 23 different time gaps out of those groups as I think pairs only happen even just a few times. Well, they didn't give all the time gaps, but they certainly gave time gaps. The good news for me is Gonzalez gets same time as Vermark and Bono. So that already gives him even more of a boost. He will yellow jersey, I want to say. I don't remember how big the gap was to Sivakov. I think it was close behind us, but I think Sivakov had a pretty healthy gap in front. We'll look at that in a moment. But Hindley, 19 seconds behind. Arietta gets same time as Lopez. That one made sense as those two actually did come in together. Adria at 39, 52 seconds to a group of four. They were a little spread out, but, you know, similar to how these guys were. Group of five at a minute 13. Big group at a minute 35, Sivakov included. So he loses a minute and a half plus a four second time bonus. So he loses a minute 39 to Abner Gonzalez. Decker, 245, Hoggins in that group. And then we're looking at guys losing huge chunks of time, which means we're really, really set well for this final stage for hanging on to at least a podium with Abner Gonzalez. For Mark takes the stage win, and as a team, coming in with the fittest peak, 
coming in with the objective has done us very very well in this race against really good riders who probably are not looking at this on their calendar going hey that's a major race we want to be well set for that one probably just us and we come in to make the most of it here is the overall gonzalez leads by a minute 59 seconds ahead of adria Sivakov, minute 24 behind hindley minute 44 215 to hamilton and i would say that that is probably far enough down to be safe as in stage five Gonzalez is going to lose a little time and let's make some comparisons of remark all the way into the top 10 but no up to 13th after a fantastic ride there so but no out of time trialist he's not going to hold that 13th Almeida was a real serious threat but at 335 behind even though he's got a 77 time trial 81 prologue he's not going to cover three and a half minutes Ben Tollett also pretty good but also over three minutes behind Vermark is probably not going to hang on to a top 10. He is a very weak time trialist. Hagita, Mater, Martinez, all similar. Suter, just a 70 for him. Hamilton, not good. None of those guys are going to challenge because Gonzalez is okay. He's similar to them. Hindley, also a 70, so he will not gain. Sivakov, a 73, and Adria, a 70, giving Gonzalez, even though he is only a 70, None of those guys are going to gain substantial time. So here's what it's down to. Gonzalez expected plus two. He had a plus three today. If he gets a plus two, he's going to win this thing. He's going to win this thing. If he gets less than a plus two, there's a chance that one of these riders, if they get a plus five on the day, Plus you throw in the difficulty bonus that they already have. There's going to be a chance that these guys could overtake him down to, I'd say, Mar Martinez is the lowest just because he's actually the better time trialist of the group, even though he's not good. But, you know, a plus four over Gonzalez is going to, he's going to gain time. He's going to gain, hopefully, half a minute. But if he's got a plus five and we have a minus three, he can gain a lot more than half a minute. He can gain multiple minutes, and that's, that's where our threat is. So race day condition is going to be hugely important for Gonzalez and nobody else. For Mark Bonneau are not good time trialists, so don't expect them to hang on to a top 10. It's going to be all about Mr. Gonzalez. And we could... Uh, I can tell you this, though. Regardless of race day condition, he's going to have a top five. He's not going to fall down the order that much. It's going to take somebody having a really, really good race day condition while we have a very bad one for us to fall off the podium. But the win is certainly not guaranteed. So Filippo Ghana just went top of the time charts here with 19 minutes and 45 seconds as our reference. That is what we are pushing for. That's what we're aiming for with these guys. And uh, Bogley, good test. He is very, very, very similar to Gonzalez. He had a plus three race day condition and is 48 seconds down on Ghana. Now, everybody from third place on down is 24 seconds behind so we're, we're, we're talking about 20 second loss remember we have 59 seconds to spare so that's that's the first test now frigo also very similar he again today had another minus three race day condition draw so he has not been feeling too good this week despite the minus three and the negative he still was only a minute down compared to the field, right? Exclude the Ghana part. Subtract that 24 seconds away. So he's about a minute behind. There's that risk, right? There's what we were talking about. Bogley and Frigo, very similar to each other. One was a plus three. One was a minus three. And we're talking about a little over a half minute difference in the timing as a result. Hoggins had a plus four today also similar what did he do he is that third place he is that benchmark at 24 seconds behind right now ahead of mikhail bjerg same time but ahead of bjerg who's a fantastic time trialist so arietta i've put him on auto he's another one a minus three and also not a good time trialist he is i think our weakest 
rating. So Bono, no, sorry, Bono is, Bono we're gonna leave on auto as well. And then we'll set Vermark off here shortly. Vermark, he's got a good draw, but he is the other weakest time trialist and then Arietta. So that was why I didn't turn these guys into leaders on that previous stage. Uh, Vermark though is good enough today to be balanced meaning he he'll be easy enough to manage gonzalez will be setting off here fairly soon but uh that's gonna come down to that race day condition as a team right now thanks to arietta and huggins we are due for a high race day condition to just be net neutral on the day as a team so hopefully that is how things work out for us I don't know if we will be so fortunate. Could easily be a negative race day draw, but it's time to find out. Moment of truth. <laughs> ah, yes, we got it. Okay, now this this is gonna just be net neutral as a team, but Gonzalez has a very good race day condition draw. He's got a 76 time trial, a 79 prologue, and at 18.1 kilometers, 17 and a half is 50-50 split, which means this is ever so slightly more time trial pull than your prologue but at 79 and 76 you know split down the middle so 77 and a half 77.4 ish with that ever so slightly in the direction of the smaller number and an 82 and 83 stamina resistance on this one means gonzalez is he's not losing a minute he is not going to lose a minute here. We will be just fine. Gonzalez is going to win this thing. All right. He sets off. We'll settle in at an 86. Sobrero somehow goes ahead of Filippo Ghana. That is shocking because right where Kevin Vermark is right now is literally the only hill that you face other than the smallest amount of undulation. That short little punchy hill. That's it. Uh, but no, come on, buddy. For Mark, final kilometer. And I'll push to the line. Minute 17 for him. That's not bad. That is not bad. Okay, Gonzalez, 10K to go. He was 21 seconds down, 59th overall at the first time check. But... I always push a little bit harder here shortly. And we, we tend to hold that time fairly well. Hoggins is out of the podium, but he's still in a top five place. Still a good benchmark. Gonzalez is going to be ever so slightly worse than what he was. So maybe 30 to 40 seconds behind is the expectation for Gonzalez on this one at the finish. 29 seconds there. That is good for 13th right now. Conrad... The only name I'm seeing up front right now, Almeida, was 14th. So we're, we're going to be in amongst those guys in time. Ooh, too hard, too hard. Get that little acceleration there that I probably shouldn't have quite pushed for. But here is that final turn. You'll get a little descent here, which means you're not going to burn in until you get to the last 100 meters or so. And Gonzalez pushing for that line. Eighth place, 35 seconds down. Right in that window that I was thinking. So excellent run, excellent run. And that is a win overall secured. We've done it. We didn't just get the top five. We've won. In the end, they've given Gonzalez 10th on the stage, same time as Patrick Conrad. Uh, Higuita is up there. Ghana, surprisingly, not winning this one, even though he was massive favorite. Uh, and we stretched the lead in the end. Gonzalez takes the win ahead of Adria, Sivakov, Hindley. So no change to the order of the top four. Suter moves into fifth place, though. Uh, Martinez at seventh, Mater at ninth. For Mark does drop out of the top ten, as expected, finishing in twelfth place. Almeida, one of the ones moving up, but only by one spot in his case, surprisingly enough. And Bono also slipping down the order a little bit to 17th. No matter, though, we win. And we win by a minute and 20 seconds. Wow. Wow, what a run-in. Did we get any other classifications? Gonzalez was second in the sprint. 
he had enough to win the King of the Mountains jersey as well. The under 25s, and my oh my, were we all over that one. Five riders in the top eight, and the team classification as well. Great result. Uh, I think our sponsor confidence for the year is going to be a foregone conclusion. Of course, last episode I mentioned how it was going to be easier. Maybe it was the episode before, but uh, I predicted that this was going to be an easy year for the sponsor confidence, which was a surprise because usually when you move from sponsor to sponsor, there's a pretty substantial bump in the sponsor expectations. Not this year, not this sponsor quite easy and that was one of only two difficult objectives and we aced the test now what are the only things that could turn on us later on you know we have these two hard objectives of course we just aced this one and we've had a a great start to the year succeeding in all three so yes we have a hundred percent evaluation right now what are the only things that could stand in our way because we only have that one more difficult uh, objective and it's Eschborn Frankfurt it's a sprint and getting a top 10 in a sprint, even if it's world tour, I think is is far from the hardest thing that you're going to do. Proper lead out, sprint train, getting a top 10 is fairly easy. Winning is another matter when you don't have top sprinters, but top 10 is generally one of the easier tasks you're going to have in a, a flat sprint, even with poor sprinters. Just a good lead out could get you a top 10 not all day, every day, but you know, very high percentage of the time, 75, 80% of the time. So assuming we get through those, well, let, let's assume we fail this one. The task can then be made more difficult because of all the other objectives, even though they're minor. It's national championships. National championships are usually a boost, but it's a bunch of top tens. You figure we can score quite a few top tens, but that's the only place where I can see this suddenly getting more difficult because normally the national championships are a boost to your sponsor confidence until you get to world tour. Even then it can be a tiny boost. Easy points, especially when you have a bunch of different countries represented. It's usually an easy way to boost your sponsor confidence. But this year it's full of objectives. So what happens when we only get top 25s at all of those? Instead of getting a boost, we're actually going to see the national championships cause a decline so it's not a guarantee yet but yeah it, I, it's i'm i'm quite confident that we are going to have our high evaluation for the year you know we're already getting a few results the registered riders is doing fine arietta and gonzalez are, are well-known guys so i can say we're in we're in good shape we're in pretty dang good shape on on that front which does mean we're, we're going to be pushing quite quickly through the year. I think we're at four or five World Tour races right now uh, on the calendar. So those will be kind of the main focal point of this season. But this is going to be a much faster season than what we normally see. It's, it's weird that we're already in season three on episode 18. And it looks like, you know, inside far fewer than 25 episodes, we'll be starting season four. And maybe we'll do so as a world tour team. Wouldn't that be something? By the way, just throwing this one out there, I won't give away too many details yet. I want to leave a little mystery for you, but I already know what my next PCM series will be. The only question is whether it's my PCM 23 career mode or whether somewhere, somehow, at some point, whether it's the Pro Cyclist series or this series, wraps up much earlier than the end of the year. And I started thin, but I'm excited for the concept that I have. I really want to try it out. And I really want to try it out on PCM 22. So there's a good chance that one, if not both of these series, will not make it all the way to the end of the calendar year and the release of PCM 23. And that series will pick up where one of these leave off or both of these cut back. You know, whether this one goes down to two days and the pro cyclist is done and that one picks up the three day slot. Whatever the case may be, I do know what that next one will be. Uh, That's going to do it for this episode, though. As we wrap things up, I'll just get a quick look at where the team stands in the rankings. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Toll it on top of the standings right now. 
Gonzalez is third in the Continental Rankings. McKellar for Mark both up there as well. We top the Continental Rankings. There's that progress we're talking about. Eighth in the Super Prestige at this stage in the season. It's only February. Big races come. Grand Tours, we're not going to be in them, so there's a lot of points on those. We won't stay here, but what a start to the year. Israel Premier Tech is ahead of us, by the way. And Continental Pro. Continental Pro, they got bumped out right at the end by somebody, somebody, presumably down here near the bottom. All those look like normal, your normal suspects. Arkea Samsic, was it them who bumped them off? Everybody else looks like the normal group, so uh, probably Arkea Samsic and Israel Premier Tech switching spots. Anyway, I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.